Hello, I'm Speculative Dude. Welcome to this week's movie review. Today I've got my co-host, the man in black. But just being what they were, we could only get one. So, he's going to help me out today. He, and we just got back from taking a look at Disney and Pixar's Wreck-It Ralph. And, uh, you know, um, I, I don't know, what were your first thoughts on it? Because honestly, I thought it was actually a little bit better than I thought I was expecting. Can't say much more than it was pretty good. Yeah, I I loved obviously video games. We both love video games, and that uh, that's yeah. that's one of the biggest reasons why we went to see it together. Was you know we're huge video game fans. We're gamers for, without a doubt. And uh, you know there's so many references in this in this one. Whether you're a fan of you know old school arcade style Nintendo, I mean right up through the to modern you know parodies of modern games, including Halo. Exactly. It's I mean. It's almost ridiculous how much they threw in here, and I really have to admit I'm kind of curious what their uh, copyright bill was on this one because that's I mean you, know, you got to admit it, that couldn't have been cheap to get all those characters. Definitely, so, but uh, you know um, what? Now, what were your thoughts on the animation style? Because Pixar's done so many different animation stylings. I thought I, mean, I don't know this one was uh, while it was colorful and bright and you know kind of that. I I don't know if the it definitely didn't. Like wow me as far as the animation goes, but uh, I don't know, that's you know what what did you think? What was your opinion on that one? Well, I personally didn't see much difference from any other Pixar, but I don't pay attention to that sort of thing. No, oh, that's fair. It was nice though to see human beings, even if they were computer characters, instead of animated lamps or. Objects, yeah. Which, and considering the there was, considering there really kind of was a lot of those things in here, just because of based off video game wise, it's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's. Um, that's. I guess one thing I thought was amusing was a lot of the characters, especially in the main, you know, Ralph's main game. Uh, <laughs> I I always thought that when they were not the game characters, I mean, when they were you know just being themselves and the game wasn't yeah. being played. That I thought it was funny that they still went through the kind of jerky old school motion. I thought that was so hilarious to, that they actually acknowledged yeah. those. Yeah, that was definitely unique. Yeah, that's. Uh, um, voice work I thought was actually pretty good. Uh, was yeah, a little bit better than I was expecting. Especially the guy who played did the voice of uh, King Candy. That's yeah. Uh, he he did Edwin. Mannerisms and just sounding like him so yeah, well. Yeah, that was a very good Edwin impression. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I have to admit, yeah, I was trying to throughout the movie. I was trying to figure out in my head, you know, who does this? You know, who's he sound like? And that's exactly what it was like. Yeah, you you came up with the with the name at the end. It's like yeah, it's you know, forgive me for not knowing who actually you know the name. I didn't recognize the name of the the actor who did actually did him in the game. But his... You mean the movie. Or the movie, yeah. It's like, ha! <laughs> yeah. Game. Game, movie, whatever. Uh, Same difference in this case. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, in the movie, I don't, I didn't recognize the actor's name, but his impression was spot on. Yeah. Even you recognized it as Ed Wynn, even if you didn't I remember... Didn't, I couldn't come up with Ed Wynn's name, but it's like, okay, yeah, it's like, you know, I can even picture the movies that he's been in, and, you know, so... For those of you who might not know, Ed Wynn was... Uh, well, in Mary Poppins, he played Uncle Albert when everybody yes. was laughing and they had the tea party on the ceiling in Mary Poppins. He was the um, he was Uncle Albert, who was uh, the guy who was you know stuck on the ceiling at that time. So that's probably the most recognizable role he's had. Yeah, he's done a lot of other small roles, but that voice of his is pretty much always unmistakable. Yeah. So yeah, so the impression of him was just spot on. And, um, uh, I did not recognize. I, mean, I didn't realize uh, you got the. The character of Vanellope, the little girl. Uh, I didn't realize that that was Sarah Silverman. Uh, as uh, I know you're not as familiar with Sarah Silverman. I, I am. I'm not usually a big fan of hers, just because her style of comedy doesn't you know particularly suit me. But uh, but I actually thought she did pretty good as the you know the little. I mean, she's a little kid. She's playing a little kid and you know running around. Probably really not more than six years old. Probably. I mean, yeah, I think the character is probably about that. And uh, but yeah, it's a very hyperactive. It's like and she she did that role pretty good. Yeah, the whole. Uh they call the race? Uh, oh, Sugar Rush. Sugar Rush, yeah. Which, um, I, I, I'm guessing it's supposed to be a cross between Sugar Something Else and San Francisco Rush, is what I'm guessing, but, 
you know, the, the race game, but, you know, I, I don't know. think there's a game called Candy Mountain or something like that. Could be something, yeah, so either, yeah, it's, you know, something like that, and, uh, yeah, it was, that, that was pretty good, uh, um, you know, John C. Riley, he does, and he did a great job as Ralph, uh, you know, it's, he didn't, while he, there were moments of his character having frustration all that, he didn't do it over the top, you know, it's, yeah. it was, you know, it's one of those situations where, it looks, if you're getting into this, well, we should mention the the story itself. Good point. Um, yeah. So I hey, there I go off on a tangent. I tend to do that. You guys know. Uh, but uh, the main character, Ralph, um, it has been playing this old school game. Uh, you could say in a midlife crisis rises. Yeah, I guess you could say. Yeah, that's like, probably pretty accurate. You know, he's uh, he's the villain character, and and they have this. this you know, world when the arcade that they you know basically live in is yeah. shut down. All the characters actually you know become you know you know characters. They move around through the town through the like the power cords and that. That's kind of funny. Yeah. But uh, the power uh, I cords mean, are the subway. The yeah. I mean, strip plugs are the yeah, like a little uh, like a train station. Yeah. Um, I, I thought you know we've seen digital versions of worlds like with Tron and that, and that's yeah. you know that's interesting. And this just kind of in a way this almost simplifies that version. It's, you know, I mean, it's a kid's movie, of course, but it's, you know, it's it's one of those, like, oh, you know, it's kind of amusing to see different characters from different video games interacting with one another. and That is always fun. Yeah. Um, especially when you get the the actual opening scene, which oh, you, a lot of people saw in the trailers, was him at a, what, what is basically, you know, a Villains Anonymous meeting. It's, uh, what, what was the actual call on it? The, the, uh, was it Bad Anon. Bad Anon or something like that, yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, he's, you know, and Ralph is kind of just unloading that he's frustrated with, you know, everybody's, you know, in that, in his game is, you know, the main character, what's the, what's the, Felix? Uh, Felix, Felix Jr. Yeah, Felix, he's the, you know, he's the hero, so everybody likes him, and Ralph, because he's the villain, is kind of, you know, thrown aside and nobody cares about him. Put out to pass, no. Thrown out in the cold. Thrown out in the cold, yeah, there you go, yeah, I said. But, uh, yeah, he, you know, and so he's, you know, he's kind of depressed with that. He's talking with other characters that everybody would recognize as villains from, uh, from video games. You know, you had Bison, you had Zangief, you know, and uh, from Street Fighter. Koopa, a.k.a. Bowser, you know, whichever you want to call him, from Mario. <laughs> the villain from Sonic. Uh, yeah, sure what uh, is. well, it depends on which version you, you like. Either Eggman or Dr. Robotnik. Personally, I like Robotnik better because it sounds less stupid. Uh, <laughs> Well, it sounds better than Eggman, but <laughs> true. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I did find it amusing when uh, that uh, Ralph is sitting next to uh, uh, Satan. He says, "Thank you, Satan." He says, uh, "Actually, it's Satine." And I, I, I was like, "Wow, that's." <laughs> and if you check the credits, it actually is spelled S A T I A N or something. I A N. Like so that's yeah, you know, a little you know amusing. I'm, I'm not sure that's actually correct, but it, yeah, it's close enough. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you know, good, you know, little amusement there. Uh, but yeah, you have other characters that, you know, like, even in that scene that never talk, uh, like, uh, you see, uh, what I believe is Noob Cybot from, uh, Mortal Kombat, or Smoke, depending on, you know, which, yeah. uh, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. He's kind of dark grayish, so it's like halfway between Noob Cybot and Smoke. Um, there's, uh, there's a, you know, some kind of cybernetic man there. There's, uh, one of the ghosts from, uh, <laughs> Pac Man. From Pac Man, which is, you know, great. And, you know, and basically at the end of their little meeting, they go their own separate ways, you know, everybody goes back to their game and stays there, waits for the next day to come, and go back to playing. Yeah. So, so it's, uh... If you're a video gamer, you will definitely enjoy playing Where's Waldo with all the different characters. Oh, it was great, especially when they come along to the, uh, like, the train station area. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, you see all these characters, and you see all the different, uh, games lined up in what is essentially, you know, power sockets, and it, that's literally what it looks like. The train hops on with the little, you know, the cord and goes along there. But each one is marked. And you'll recognize some of the games, especially some of the older ones, they actually did. Some of, yes. Actually looks just like this. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's old, old Burger Time from, you know, Nintendo. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. There's, you know, Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, it's, you know, and then you get the characters here. Qbert, you know, some of the characters who were in Qbert's game. You know, I love this. Will NPC in FPS for, for food. You know, it's... <laughs> It's it's goofy, but it's it's like cheesy goodness for video games. It's 
cheese, but a very good kind of cheese. Exactly. We're not talking the burger here. <laughs> but that hurts just hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, anyway, Ralph is depressed about that, so he decides to prove that you know everybody basically just says you know you're a bad guy, deal with it. You know, even the people with the bad guy, you know, bad and on are just like, you know, we're bad guys. It's kind of what we do. We just accept it. And he's like, you know, I don't want to be a bad guy. And granted, in the end, he, uh, at the end of the movie, I'm just, I don't, I know I'm skipping a lot here, but it's like, he uh, learns to accept what his skills are in wrecking and uses it to do some good. So Namely, not getting the game unplugged. <laughs> exactly. You know, to when, uh, basically the the way a character might die in this one would be essential or get forgotten or whatever is would be if their game got unplugged and you know, just completely deleted from the system. Uh, no power, no life. Exactly. Uh, you know, and now they could have gone into the whole, and I'm glad they didn't. But I mean, granted, it's a kids' movie, so I didn't think they would. But they could have gone into the whole, you know, are you a villain or a bad guy because you're just supposed to be a bad guy, or do you have you know some control over your life? Can you decide to be something more? You know, and I mean, like I said, there's a very minor amount of that, but not a lot. It was, you know, it's a kids' movie, so it's, you, you didn't want it to be heavy in that. Yeah. So, um, now, uh, I'd say, <laughs> now, I will have to say there were sappy moments. But yeah, but I think they it's were acceptable yeah. and expected, even. Yeah, they weren't out of left field, and they weren't, you know, how's, how do I say this? They weren't so over the top that it's like, okay, oh brother, that's just stupid. It's one of those like, okay, you kind of saw it coming, but it's like, yeah, it's you know, it's you expected it. It almost it's tearjerker moment, but, but yeah, uh, there you know, there's moments in there where uh, it, it's kind of like ho in Hotel Transylvania. Yeah, it's pre fairly predictable most of the time, but you know, it's like it's not predictable in a bad way. It's you know, it's like okay, I can see that coming, but you know, that's you know, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, so. Um, now what, uh, uh, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, when, how, how did, what did you think about the ending of the, of the movie, the way they actually ended it with the, the, the virus bugs? We'll just, we'll just leave on that, uh, calling of that, we won't ruin that much for the story. Was, uh, you know, coming in and then having to figure out how to destroy them at the very end, the way they, uh, <laughs> definitely unique, yeah. I would say. Um, in... Never thought of soda pop as being hot myself. No, I, that was rather awkward. It's, well, it's, I mean, you know, it's, it's equated to lava. Uh, you know, you know, we're we're it glad to go over lava because we don't. Yeah, we're not. We don't want to give away too much. But yeah, it's. I mean, there's there's a there's there's a situation that happens with soda, and it's yeah, it's, in this one in one area, it's kind of equated to lava, and it's used. I won't say how, but it's very amusing how it's done. It's just, in fact, it's almost hilarious the way it's done. almost <laughs> almost. It's well, I wasn't you know, falling on a chair laughing, but... Because, once again, you could kind of see it coming, yeah. but it wasn't bad. Um, well, in case anybody cares, it's actually in Sugar Rush, and everything there is based off of sugar, and soda is sugar, so... Yeah, so, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a reaction, we'll just say that, and it's, you know, with the, with the soda and... You're giving some, away too much. No, no, no it's, I won't say what happened, but... Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's very... Despite being kind of it's like okay, yeah, you can see it coming. It was it was pretty entertaining. Um, yeah. uh, I did. I kind of liked the uh, you know the friendship between Ralph and little uh, Vanellope. That was kind of amusing. It's you know it's it was the typical. Even though it was kind of the typical of two castaways. Cast. Yeah, cast up. Cast out cast. Out cast. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, it's There's one for the cool period. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we uh, even though that was from. Uh, you know, they're they're both a, a pair of outcasts. They, you know, it's the usual coming together to you know the more than the sum of their parts essentially. Yeah. But uh, also both of them coming to grips with what you know they are on their own. You know. Yeah. Uh, Penelope is what you might refer to as a glitch. You know, she's you know something's wrong with her. She's not quite. They never explain what exactly is wrong. I mean, they you get some explanation as to why it happened, but not what exactly yeah. her problem is. Uh, you know, and Ralph, obviously, you know, he want, he doesn't, he knows he's the bad guy, but at the same time, it's like, well, you know, is this all I am? Is this the only thing? Yeah. And, you know, them kind of getting used to each other and, you know, and both accepting that they both know a little bit more about their own situations yeah. than they do before, so. Um, 
trying to think of uh, um, wh when they uh, kind of throw in the. I, I think my favorite part might have been when they threw in the mini game of ma how to make the. There's there's a scene where they have to they have to make a car in Sugar Rush. It's I mean, Sugar Rush is is a racing game. I say we're not going to give away too much by saying that, but yeah, it's uh, but you have to make a little car there and them. Making a car together and the end product is, in my opinion, I just thought that was hilarious. Definitely unique and one of a kind. Yeah, it's uh, it's like wow, that's. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else was there uh, when they had the? Uh, uh, I like when Phoenix laments that he that he he Feels. fixes that he fixes everything. Yeah, um, it, there's a moment where he's where Felix is in in. Well, incarcerated. Won't say what happened there, but you know he notices one of the bars is loose on his prison, and he thinks to himself, "Okay, you know, I'll, you know, you know, I'll break out this way." And then he uses his hammer. Well, in the in his, in his own video game, his hammer fixes, fixes things. Everything. So he hits the, you know, instinctively he's like, "Okay, you know, I have a hammer. I'll break something." He hits the loose bar with his hammer, and all of a sudden the bars become like thicker, and, and he's he's trapped in there even worse than he was before. So it's like, oh. It's like that. That was kind of clever. I thought a little play on his his abilities actually backfiring on him. Considering that it's called Wreck It Ralph, and in the ads, all you see tend to see is the Ralph and the little kid. Yeah, you know, okay. It was interesting to see how much Fix It Felix Jr. and one of the other characters from another game, play, how much they play into the story. True. Yeah, this is surprising. Um, it's and it's done fairly well. Um, there's a, there's uh, as he said the the Halo parody, which yes. um, it, it's you know obviously there's certain games that obviously they couldn't get the copyrights to. Clearly, this was one of them. So they call it Heroes Duty, um, which I think is uh, you know, obviously a parody of you know. Uh, I think it's a parody of Halo, Call of Duty, and Medal of Honor. Yeah, exactly. Among others. So it's you know it. It's kind of you know a funny thing you know the way they do it. And one of the characters from there or or uh, comes and, and actually at the end uh, uh, falls in love with Felix. That's uh, that's granted that one does seem a little forced, but it is funny how it's done. So it's not it's not one of those wow that was so forced it was stupid. It was one of those wow that's so forced it's hilarious. <laughs> I won't say what happens, but at the wedding between. These two characters. Yeah, you, you get a very nice scene, especially when you get the fallback of, yeah, or the backdrop of what happened to the previously, the previous yes. character, yeah, the character previously. You get that, and it's like, oh yeah, that's. Uh, it's like okay. So, but uh, you know, overall, you know, I have to say that, like I said, this was better than. I mean, I expected it to be fairly amusing. You know, Disney Pixar's usually are. You know, they're yeah. at least entertaining. Um, but this one actually was actually even better than I thought it was going to be. It's, you know, I thought it was pretty good. I would have to rate it as better than pretty good, but okay. uh, my vocabulary fails me at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, it's kind of hard to put it, it's, you know, it's a lot of those, it may not be excellent, but it's, you know, it's, it, it is... It require too many adjectives to describe properly. Exactly. <laughs> in a short amount of time. It's, you know, it really is, you know, it's a good movie. It's one I can definitely recommend without reserve. You know, there's no, uh... I mean, there's nothing in it that I think any parent would be offended at, at least not the, what I remember seeing. So I think any parent would be, you know, would could take their kid to see this, you know. Yeah. There's enough subtle references to a lot of, you know, the games, obviously, whether it's subtle or overt, that any, pretty much almost any gamer's going to enjoy it. Um, and even, you know, people like ourselves, you know, we're, we're a little bit older, you know, we enjoyed it, not just because of, although possibly primarily because of the video games, but overall... Yeah. The, you know, it was actually a, a decent movie. To quote something I read on the internet, it probably is the best video game movie ever made. Possibly. Thus far. Thus far, yeah. It's, you know, and it's it's a little ironic that it's... Not it, based on an actual video game. Exactly. Which, now, of course, you know someone on the internet somewhere is going to make that game. It's, I mean, that's... You know <laughs> that's going to happen. already have. Probably. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. It's, I mean, probably as soon as it was announced, somebody probably, so, you know, some... So uh, I some think they actually made an official version of it. Oh, really? An official one? Something to that effect. Hmm. I'll have to check. I'll have to check. Uh, I'll have to check live and see if there's a downloadable version. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if there was. Something like that. But uh, yeah, it's you know overall though you know it's yeah for for a movie that was based off of a fictitious video game it probably was one of the most 
accurate, if you will, kind of representations of what you think something like this might be. Yeah. You know, so, uh, okay, you know, it's, uh, Okay, well, that's our opinion of Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, take it for what it's worth. I'm Speculative Dude, alongside the Man in Black. Hopefully we'll see you next time, and uh, hopefully we can have you on the show again. Remember, I was never here. All right. <clears throat>